Hey guys, today we have a quick video comparing all of the stabilization options if you are shooting with Sony cameras. If you are considering buying, you have a few cameras already and want to see how the options compare, or you are just a nerd like me and you're curious about which stabilization does best, then the next few minutes are for you. Stick around until the end for conclusions and rankings, and if you enjoy the video, then a like, subscribe, and share would be amazing, and I would love to hear any questions or thoughts you have down in the comments. So. How are we going to test stabilization? I'm glad you asked. Like a triathlete, we have three situations, but I suck at swimming and cycling, and the only running I do is away from my problems. So our three tests are going to be walking and vlogging, a simple handheld pan, like you might do for a landscape or following a subject, and a dolly in and move around, like you might do for a product video or for some B-roll. There are many other ways you can test, but this should give us something simple, consistent, and plausible, which is better than many politicians could give you in 2021. And now I hear you ask, what are the types of stabilization we will compare? We have in-lens stabilization, which Sony call optical steady shot, or OSS. Weird, I thought that stood for obscure shoe salesman. I guess not. We will test this on the A6400 using lenses with OSS, since the 6400 has no built-in stabilization. Second, we have in-body stabilization, or IBIS, which should help stabilize things whether your lens has stabilization or not. We will test this on the Sony A7C, which has IBIS, using unstabilized lenses, which means they have no OSS. You know, what we're really missing here is more acronyms. Third, we have digital stabilization, which Sony calls active steady shot, this crops into the image a little bit to stabilize things, and we will be testing it using the ZV-1. Last, but a long length from least, is gyroscopic stabilization, where newer cameras record spatial data using gyroscopes. The free Catalyst Browse software then uses that data to stabilize videos in post-production. This is available on the ZV-1 and A7C, so we will get some testing from both. So there we go, OSS versus IBIS versus digital versus gyro. Sounds like a particularly poor quality pro wrestling match. Right, test footage time. The toughest situation is walking, so that's where we'll start. First, a baseline. No stabilization looks horrific on every system. Unless you want to give your audience motion sickness or possibly leprosy of the eyes, you don't want to use this. Next is in-lens stabilization. The first thing I noticed here is not everything that says it has OSS performs equally. The 16 to 50 lens you'll typically get as a kit lens with the Sony APS-C cameras maybe has a slight difference compared to no steady shot when you turn OSS on, but it's not what I would call smooth or even usable for vlogging or walking. The OSS in the more expensive 18 to 105 f4 lens is way better. Nice, smooth, and definitely usable, provided you don't move too crazily. None of my interpretive dance then. Moving on to IBIS, which we will show with a couple of unstabilized lenses. This is with the 28-60 A7C kit lens, and now with the Sigma 16mm f1.4, which as a crop lens would give us a 24mm field of view here. I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't seem to make a huge difference. There's maybe less jitter, but it's about as smooth as licking a cheese grater. Next is digital stabilization with the ZV-1. Digital stabilization has two flavors, standard steady shot, which does not crop into the image, but doesn't offer much stabilization, and active steady shot, which crops in, but provides a lot more stabilization. Standard steady shot is better than nothing, but it's still shakier than my understanding of why Twilight is so popular. However, active steady shot is the best so far, in my opinion. Comfortably better than IBIS and more consistently smooth than OSS, even for our nicer, pricier lens. The only downside is the slight crop into the image and the limited availability, since it's only on some of the newest Sony cameras. And that is true of Catalyst gyro stabilization as well. And wow, the quality here is ridiculously good. For me, it's a solid winner whether you're shooting on the ZV-1 with no steady shot, or on the A7C with an unstabilized lens, like our 28-60, or even better, something like the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Smoother than an ice rink after a Brazilian wax. Weird analogy. Want more info on Catalyst? Link in the description. Our next test is Peter Pan's less intelligent brother. 
simple pan. This is an easier shot, so while no steady shot can still be a bit jerky, it is already much closer to usable. From here, we are focusing on the better quality OSS we get in our 18 to 105 lens. OSS smashes this test more easily than you can smash the like button. Better hit it, or that lens might end up thinking it's better than you. Ibis does a similar and solid job. I'm not sure if it's a bit less smooth or if that's me doing a shakier job with the shot, but any difference is small and it's definitely usable. Over to digital stabilization, and standard steady shot seems good enough here, similar to OSS. Active steady shot is maybe a little smoother at the price of that extra crop. Catalyst works great on this test and might even be overkill since the in camera methods work fine but it's still good to know that you can throw your panning shots into Catalyst along with walking shots and get good results. Test three is the dolly and swerve. Not this kind of dolly, and the term is action figure, by the way, but the filmmaking kind where we move our camera forward in space. No steady shot is not awful, but it is far too shaky to be usable on its own, at least if your hand-eye coordination is as good as mine. OSS performs well, and I think if you spent more time than me perfecting the camera move, you would be able to get really good results. Ibis is okay. Like drinking a lot of alcohol before having a conversation with Nigel Farage, it smooths out the most unattractive elements that you would get with no steady shot, but OSS is superior. Digital next, and standard steady shot to my eye is a little worse than OSS and somewhat better than Ibis. Active steady shot is maybe a little smoother than OSS. It looks good. Catalyst smooths things out really well, but I still noticed some little bits of deviation. Which reminds us that how well you do the camera move is important, whatever kind of stabilization you use. When I did a good job, Catalyst is probably the best, but the margin is not huge compared to digital. So, conclusions. In last place is Ibis, in-body steady shot. It's helpful on simple panning and might get good enough results with simple movements that you can polish the rough edges in your editing software, but anything more than that and I'm not confident about the results. Next is OSS. When a lens does it well, like this chunky boy 18 to 105, it's impressive handles even walking well and other situations with ease. But not everything that says it has OSS has the same level of performance, so be sure to research each lens before you rely on it. Second place goes to digital stabilization, especially active steady shot. This comes at the price of a crop into your image and it's only available on newer models like the ZV-1 and A7S 3 but it does a consistent good job in pretty much every situation. And it's only second by a fine margin. So our winner, by just a little, is Catalyst Gyro Stabilization. The results can be phenomenal. It adds a crop like digital stabilization, but you get to control the amount. It lets you get amazing stabilization on unstabilized lenses, which would otherwise only be possible with a gimbal. But you need to be okay with an extra post-processing step and render times, plus some other quirks you need to bear in mind while shooting, full detail in the Catalyst deep dive in the description. Overall, I think it wins on the balance of pros and cons, but what do you think? And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and especially making it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed the video, then like, subscribe and share. Let me know any questions or thoughts down in the comments. And until next time, take it easy.